Good morning. So we have our Christ candle lighted. So let's begin with our opening prayer. Sweet Spirit, we come to you today with our hearts and our minds filled with gratitude. Gratitude for this opportunity to come together and experience and learn about the goodness that you have in mind for us. We say thank you. Thank you for all of the first responders, all of the medical workers that are taking care, care of people all over this country, all over the world, helping them to move through this time of distress and disease. And we say thank you for the leaders all across the world that are hearing your words and thoughts of wisdom, <clears throat> making decisions for our safety and for our health. And we are grateful also for our speaker today, Reverend Asha Burston Johnson, and the message and the inspiration that she has for us, knowing that it will shine a new light on our path. I would like for you to join me now, if you look at your screen. We want to bless all of our children wherever they may be, all across the planet. We love you. We, we bless you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you just the way you are. And we behold the Christ in you. Amen. Good morning from Unity in the Olympics, located in Fort Angeles, Washington. I am Reverend Donna Little. I am Minister Emeritus for this spiritual family. At this present moment, our building is closed to gatherings, but our hearts and our minds are open to share love and light with you. We are so glad that you are safe at home and joining us for our Sunday morning virtual celebration service. This place is sacred, this place is sacred, this place is where the breath of God has come to be. This place is sacred, this place is sacred, this place is sacred, this place is where the breath of God has come to be. Place is sacred. Look in the waters, look in the skies, look in the land and come to realize this place is sacred. This place is sacred. This place is sacred. This place is where the breath of God has come to be. This place is sacred. Look in the mirror. Look in your eyes. Look in my eyes and come to realize this place is sacred. say 
place is sacred. This place is sacred. This place is where the breath of God has come to be. This place is sacred. This place is sacred. This place is sacred. This place is where the breath of God has come to be. This place is sacred. Hi, I'm Reverend Asha Burson Johnson, and I'm the spiritual director for Center for Spiritual Living Port Angeles. And I am very honored to be speaking today at Unity in the Olympics. Even though I'm not actually there, I'm in our beautiful property. And today we're going to talk a little bit, and then we're going to walk the labyrinth together. So I invite you into that process. You just heard a song called This Place is Sacred that was co written by myself. Reverend Catherine Kenyon, with words given to me by this beautiful woman named Kate Sheffield, who's no longer on this plane of existence. We used to ride in the car almost every Tuesday. I would drive her to a chiropractic appointment. She was someone who had a lot of physical liabilities, a lot of physical limitations in life. And yet she was an indomitable spirit. And she had a powerful consciousness about what is possible instead of what's impossible. So one day we were driving in the car and the words to this place is sacred came out of her. And I said, oh, this needs to be a song. And it was been a couple of years now. And here the song finally emerged. And divine timing is at work as always. For myself, these last few weeks, this last month, I've had my own personal dark night of the soul. I've gone into the depths of despair and impossibilities and fear and unworthiness. And I'm sure many of you have had the same experience. This is an interesting, as my mom calls it, problatunity. <laughs> it's an interesting time for us to explore who do we want to be in each and every moment? Not who do we have to be or who are we expected to be but who do we want to be in this moment? When I remember that this place is sacred, whatever this place happens to be, a place of beauty, like you see behind me, a place that looks ugly to someone else, but maybe critters and certain types of plant life call home. When I call my own process ugly or wrong, or not right. I'm not seeing the sacred that's possible in that moment. I'm not open to what is for me in that moment. And I believe when I remember, which is most of the time, that spirit is always for us. And so this place, the place of the darkness, the place of the fear, the place of the confusion, the place of the upset, is also sacred. It's calling us into something different, something that maybe needs to fall away, something that no longer serves us, or that we can see how it has helped us in the past and no longer is necessary. Take a breath. The place you are in is sacred, whether it's in your home or walking a trail or being socially distant from someone else and yet in their presence. 
I've been astounded at the amazing creativity that's coming out of our conscious cocooning and grateful that so many of us have places to do this social isolation. There are many in the world that don't. There are so many beings that are supporting us in being able to be isolated at home. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people, maybe invisible up until now, maybe hidden in the darkness, maybe not being acknowledged for their sacred work. Where are you not seeing the sacred in whatever is happening? This is not a judgmental question. This is not one more place where we need to make ourselves wrong. This is an opportunity to say, what am I calling this moment? Can I call it sacred? Can I see what is here for me? Maybe not in this moment. Can I call someone who can remember the truth for me when I can't? Can I reach out? to someone who may be alone. We are very blessed here where we live. There are five of us that live on this property. And so we have been isolated together. We are not alone. There are many, many people who are alone right now, who don't have an extra pair of arms to reach out, to hug, to support them. And so they have to make do with faces on a screen, on a computer, on a Zoom call, voices through the telephone. When this is over, there are many people saying, I can't wait to get back to normal. I do not look for that day. I look for a new normal, what I'm calling the aftertimes. The deeper awareness that is coming in this sacred place of isolation that is making me aware, what do I really need? What is most important to me? One small change I've made in my life in the last couple of weeks is I'm no longer going to buy paper towels. It's not a big deal. It has nothing to do with the virus or anything else, but I can make do with old stained hand towels to mop up any spills that may happen and then I can just throw them in the laundry. I don't need to make more paper waste in the world. It's one tiny thing, one small awareness of what do I need, what do I not need? What is serving me, what is no longer serving me? Take another breath. I know from personal experience, it's very easy to get sucked into what's impossible. It's very easy to get sucked down into what's wrong. Where am I falling down? Where am I not enough? These are very old, old ideas. It's time for them to let go. And yet again and again and again, these ideas may come back up. Can I see the sacred in those moments? Can you see the sacred in each and every moment of your life? Can you allow something bigger than you to fill you up when you feel completely empty? Sometimes we need to be empty for a while and then consciously choose what do I want to refill with? Maybe what, what I was filled with before isn't workable anymore. Maybe it's time for a new paradigm. For myself, for you, for the planet. What is calling us? So on this beautiful day, this beautiful, spectacular, sunny spring day where I hope you can hear all the birds that are twittering around in the background. You can hear the sound of the highway, which I call the ocean. So just imagine that it's ocean waves in the background. 
I invite you to take a walk with us. I've invited my friend Larry to walk the labyrinth for you. So I'm going to call him over to the entrance of our beautiful labyrinth. I'm going to stand behind the camera and I'm going to read some questions. I invite you to walk with Larry, letting go, letting go, and receiving. Letting go on the way in and receiving on the way out. Take a breath. Whenever you're ready, Larry. I release my parents from the feeling that they have failed with me. I release my parents from the feeling they have failed me. I release my children from the need to make me proud so that they can write their own ways according to their hearts. I release any person from the obligation to make me feel complete. I lack nothing in myself. I learn with all the beings that surround me through all time. I thank my grandparents and ancestors who met so that today I breathe life. And I release them from the faults of the past and from the wishes they did not fulfill aware that they did the best they could to resolve their situations within the consciousness they had at that moment. I honor them. I love them. And I recognize their innocence. I bear my soul before their eyes 
and that is why they know that I do not hide or owe anything more than being faithful to myself and my own existence, walking with the wisdom of the heart. I am aware that I am fulfilling my life project free of visible and invisible family loyalties that may disturb my peace and my happiness, which are my greatest responsibilities. I renounce the role of savior, of being the one who unites or who fulfills the expectations of others. And learning through love I bless my essence and my way of expressing, although there may be some who cannot understand me. I understand myself because only I lived and experienced my story. Because I know myself, I know who I am, what I feel, what I do, and why I do it. I respect all and approve all. I honor the divinity in me and in you. We are free. Thank you, Larry, for walking for all of us. The prayer I read was a traditional Nahuatl prayer that coincidentally I found online today. It showed up in my feed at exactly the right time. If you'd like a copy, you can send me an email at cslportangeles at gmail.com. I am so grateful to have been with you today, in this moment, in this place, which is sacred. May the rest of your day be a blessing and be blessed. We want to say thank you, Reverend Asha, and I send you a big virtual hug. Um, thank you for your music, your message, and your meditations.